It's become the norm now, probably for the last six years. When you follow the news, when you look at what's going on in Syria, you don't hear anything but disasters, horror stories. It became so common that it's not even considered news anymore. And we all know the details about what's going on out there. But no matter how bad it seems, no matter how low the state of the Ummah seems to be, we can never lose hope in the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan for this Ummah. It's not by coincidence that it's happening in Syria, that it's happening in the place where it's happening, in Asham, because that's a land of great significance. The, the occurrences that will happen near the end of times, they all go back to Asham, meaning Syria, Jordan, Palestine, and that surrounding area. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned it in the Quran when He said, Subhan al asra bi abdihi laylam min al masjid al haram ila al masjid al aqsa al ladhi barakna hawla. Exalted is He who took His servant by night, meaning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from al masjid al haram to al masjid al aqsa by night. Al ladhi barakna hawla. The area that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he used to make dua for that land, for the people of that land. He used to say after Fajr, Allahumma barik lana fi madinatina wa barik lana fi sa'ina wa muddina. Allahumma barik lana fi haramina wa barik lana fi shamina. He used to ask Allah to place blessings, barakah in al Madina and in the provisions of the Muslims and in the haram and in al sham. He said in one hadith, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Tuba al Sham. He repeated it three times, Ya Tuba al Sham, meaning good news or glad tidings for al Sham. Tilka malaikatullahi basatu ajni hataha ala al Sham. He said, The angels of Allah have spread their wings over al Sham. That was a place that thousands of the companions of the Prophet traveled to. It was the capital of Islam for a period of time. The trials at the end of times go back to Asham. The Iman, true faith, true faith will go back to Asham. As the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said, Ala inna al imana idha waqa'at al fitan bisham. He said that when the fitan occur, when the great trials occur at the end of times, that real faith, that Iman will be in Asham. So we have to understand that it's very difficult to see what's taking place over there right now. And sometimes we might not understand the wisdom. We might not understand the wisdom of Allah. But we have to have a certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan for this ummah. Sometimes Allah tries you in your life. You go through some unexpected difficulty. Something with your health, something with your wealth, the family. Some unexpected problems come up during the trial. We don't always know why it's happening. We're not always able to see the wisdom. Why would Allah allow this to happen right now? There is a lot of questions that we don't have answers to, but have to have certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan. We're all familiar with the story of Musa alayhi salam. When Musa was born, as the story comes in the Quran, Fir'aun had ordered his government to go out and murder the sons that are born to Bani Israel because of a vision, because of a dream that he had that it would be a child from Bani Israel that was going to overthrow his kingdom. So he ordered because of that vision, his government, his soldiers to go out every so often and murder all of the sons of Bani Israel. That was around the time when Musa السلام, was born. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired the mother of Musa. As Allah says, وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ أَنْ أَرْضَعِي And we inspired the mother of Moses, suckle him. فَإِذَا خِفْتِ عَلَيْهِ فَأَلْقِيهِ فِي الْيَمِّ وَلَا تَخَافِ وَلَا تَحْزَنِ But when you fear for him, if you fear for his life, then cast him into the river and do not fear and do not grieve. So she followed that inspiration from Allah. When she feared for her newborn's life, she cast him into the river. Now just imagine how hard would that be for the mother of a newborn child to cast him into the river, to watch the current carry him downstream and simply have to trust in the plan of Allah. That's not something easy. That's something very difficult to imagine. Allah further inspired her, إِنَّا رَادُوهُ إِلَيْكِ وَجَعِلُوهُ مِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Indeed, we will return him to you and we will make him one of the messengers. 
She had that promise, but there is no way she could fully understand what the plan of Allah was, what the wisdom of Allah was. What sense did it make to send her newborn floating down the stream? And we all know the story. The container carrying Musa landed near the castle of Fir'aun and it was picked up by his family. And his wife, she took a liking to this baby. The wife of Fir'aun, she said, he'll be a comfort for our eye. Don't kill him. Maybe we'll benefit from him. Or maybe we'll adopt him as a son. All of this while Allah says, وَهُمْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ They perceived not. Little did they know. Little did they know that it was the plan of Allah for Musa to be raised up in the castle of Fir'aun and for him to be a messenger of Allah later on in, in life and free Bani Israel from the oppression of Fir'aun. Nobody could have seen the wisdom at the time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a plan. So we should never lose faith in the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.